Hi everybody. Um, I'm going to try to walk you through a process of a painting start to finish. So what I'm doing is a little intro now and then I have two uh, time-lapse photos of my process. One will be the sketch and drawing phase and secondly of course the painting. But I wanted to just say hello and introduce what I'm doing and how how I am got to well, what it is I'm doing. During uh, the last year or so, like most of us, I've been spending a lot more time at home and so <sighs> I've indulged some of my childhood practices of playing with Legos and I did this incredible Lego set of the uh, Colosseum in Rome, which many of you know. And if you are fans of Legos, it is one of their most incredible sets. It's so beautiful and well-designed, but uh, it's huge, it's expensive, and it took forever, so. But anyway, I did it, uh, it was fun, but it started me thinking about maybe wanting to do a painting of, uh, of the space. So I went through my old photos, having visited the place quite a few times over the years, and then pulled out a couple of additional reference photos off, off the internet. But I think it was in uh, 2018 or so, a couple of years ago, they reopened some of the lower areas where the gladiators were. Um, and it was a quite fascinating and surreal experience to be right down on ground level here where uh, some of the animals were kept and the gladiators stayed. And uh, anyway, I decided to try to take a combination of these reference images and do what I always try to do in my paintings, which is not to paint, uh, never to copy a photograph, but not to paint a picture of a scene, but rather to try to paint a picture of an experience, the experience I had from being down here in the caverns and the uh, catacombs. So uh, there is no photograph of this. It's a composite of images that I saw from my reference, from my memory, and, uh, and then what I just sort of invented. So um, I've worked up a vertical composition in my sketchbook here where you're really right down on the ground level, looking up and you're surrounded with uh, bits and pieces of these ruins. Um, and then uh, to try to make a painting out of this, I'm imagining a sun angle from left to right. So this will all be in uh, shade, casting some nice shadows across and illuminating some of these lower areas and the back part of the painting will the upper walls of the Colosseum that still exist will be allowed to fade in the painting where the darkest dark and the lightest light will be much more down here where the uh, dominant vertical meets the dominant horizontal, which in this case is the horizon line, right about here. As my process goes, that's almost always where the darkest darks meet the lightest lights and right around there is where I want to put most of my contrast, deeper colors, uh, harder edges, etc. And radiating out from there, the rest of the painting will be allowed to fade out a bit. I always work up my paintings in three basic values. Light, which is often in a watercolor, the saved light of the paper. That's the lightest light. Uh, so light midtones, which will be largely in the background and the areas outside of my center of interest. And of course, three darks. And they will be largely here in sort of a, a fairly classic composition of L-shaped composition, but a reverse L-shape, where these darks will intersect with these lights here and hopefully hold the viewer through by layering these three basic values out into space. So I'm going to take this as my guideline. I will try not to look too much, if at all, at any of these reference photos. I think I have enough in my memory. 
And I'm going to move on to do the uh, final drawing on watercolor paper. So I have done a video of my drawing it. So it is here. It's a little darker than I would normally draw, but I wanted to show on camera and a little more detail than I would normally add because I wanted you to see what I was working on. Um, but when you watch the little video coming up after, you can see um, it's all freehand. It's pretty quickly and intuitively done. I invented and made up a lot of these shapes as I want. Obviously, some of these lower areas, of course, are inspired by the photograph that I have of that area. Some are rather different, but that's okay. I have decided to add a few humans to give it some life and activity and perhaps the opportunity for some brighter color. Uh, there will be color on the painting, but not a great deal. Um, I'm gonna keep it more of a tonal painting, value-oriented darks, lights, and mid-tones. Um, Oh, my sketch pencil is my beloved Blackwing Palominos. I also used a little bit of this, my beautiful Faber-Castell uh, mechanical soft drawing pencil. Soft lead's about a two to a four B. The paper surface here is a Bao Hong Master's Choice rough surface. 140 pound or uh, 300 gram, very textural. Uh, I love painting on textured papers and I think in particular this paper will suit this subject matter. My sketchbook, I should mention, since these guys are so nice to me, is a Stillman and Burn beta series soft bound sketchbook. I love these. And uh, my pigments, I'm not going to be able to talk about them as it's a time lapse, but I'm using all Daniel Smith pigments. And brushes are a combination of different. Largely, I'll be using a lot of these. My own line of Thomas Schaller brushes by Neef Company out of Australia. And probably a number of Escoda. In particular, some of these larger and mid-sized flats, the Skoda Versatile series, and a few other brushes as well, but those are the main ones, the main brands that I use. Okay, guys, so um, I'm going to stop this, and then I'm going to paint this, but in a time-lapsed way, so I won't be able to uh, supply voiceover. But uh, I hope this helps. I hope you get something out of this, and if you like what I see, Please subscribe and also consider thinking about my uh, my ongoing course I'm giving with Terracotta. I'm doing shorter workshops with them, but also I teach a year-long course with the Terracotta company. There'll be a link posted, but uh, otherwise you can check them out on my website or just Google them if you don't know them, because you should. Anyway, uh, anyway thanks for your attention and... Um, I'll see you on the other side.